Thank you for joining uh, the panel discussion for recent Spanish cinema, Meet the Filmmakers. I'm Gwen de Glees with the American Cinematheque. This panel discussion is part of recent Spanish cinema presented with the Spanish Institute of Cinematography and Audiovisual Arts, ICA, Ejeda US, and the Olympia Theater. Our guests are the actors Antonio de la Torre with Endless Trench, Sergi Lopez with The Innocence and Rosa's Wedding, Luis Miguel Segui with Instant Love. Our guest uh, directors are Isiar Bolen with Rosa's Wedding, Pilar Palomero with School Girls. Um, enjoy and don't forget to check our website, americancinematech.com, for details on our upcoming programs, as well as how you can support the American Cinematech by becoming a member and making a donation. So thank you for being with us. I'd like to invite our guests to join us. Um, actor Antonio de la Torre uh, with The Endless Trench, Sergi Lopez uh, with La Innocencia and Rosa's Wedding, Luis Miguel Segui with Instant Love, and our directors Isia Bolen with Rosa's Wedding, uh, Pilar Palomero with School Girls, and um, I think uh, Gracia Carejeta is not able, able to join us. Um, so if everyone could turn off their camera and if we could start the discussion, that would be lovely. Okay, wonderful. We'll try. Super. So thank you so much for you know being with us uh, this year or recent Spanish cinema uh, film series, the longest film series at the American Cinematheque is a virtual experience and a driving experience. Uh, we did not want to miss uh, a year, uh, even though all of our theaters, both Los Angeles and Miami, are still closed since March. So we have reinvented ourselves online. Um, you know, I would like to start the conversation with kind of a question for all of you, and maybe starting by talking uh, what different path you each took to enter the film industry and the art of uh, cinema, and especially your inspiration. What was the spark that got you started? So maybe we can start with you, um, ECR, if you want to talk about you know, your journey and how did you start in the film industry and what was the spark that made you uh, want to be in the film industry? I was more than a spark, I was, I was bring into it by chance, just by pure uh, chance. Uh, I did a film at 15 as an actress um, called El Sur by Victor Eguice. And I was chosen among, I mean, I went to a casting and all that, but literally they took me to the casting. I mean, I wasn't very, I never thought in doing film or anything. So I started as an actress in that film, which was, which was one of the, considered one of the, the most beautiful films in the, in the in the story of Spanish cinema. Uh, this director is amazing. And then I, I kept going, working as an actress for about like 20 feature films or so. And then at a point I combined it with directing. I thought, I thought that was much more going on somehow behind the camera. They were all the writing, they were all the prep, they were all the work with the team, which I love. So, so I was always very curious as I was working as an actress of what was going on behind the camera. And then I decided to to tell my own stories. And I started in, in, in a small production company with, uh, with uh, Antonio de la Torre, was part of my first three or four films, I think. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He was with us. So, um, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then little by little, I, 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 wor I was working less and less as an actress and more and more as a director. And now it's, uh, so that was my path. I started as an actress. And Antonio, if you want to uh, continue on that, what was, you know, how did you enter the, the film industry and what was your inspiration? What got it started for you? I think, I think it's uh, my, my story is obviously related to, to this story and it's here in the sense that uh, I, uh, I, I was born in a, in a city of the south of Spain in Malaga, which is, is uh, uh, it was not connected with, I think, with the center of the, of the main uh, production in Spain, which is in the city of Madrid. And I moved to Madrid in the beginning of the 90s, and I began, I began to, to study as an actor. And, and, uh, and, I, and I always say that I, my first movie, it was an experience that I was, uh, it was with my boys, but I, you couldn't see me because uh, it never was released my my my, my, my my uh, 
my, my shot of my face. So the second one, I was dapped, was, uh, so you couldn't see me with my own body and my, <laughs> and my voice. And, and, it's, it's, finally, it's a sad story, but it, it's the story. And the, uh, the third, uh, we, we have a sentence explaining that the third is, is, is the, the start at the end. And uh, it was um, uh, Hola, Estas Sola, was the, the first uh, movie of Isia Boyain. I finally, finally, <laughs> I get my advice, so, so I, I could I could be with my face, with my own voice. And yes, it's in that side and, and something who can, and connecting with the, with the story this year, what's relating, but is, is the truth was with the first time. And, and I, I, I really remember like a, like a shot here, 25, to, no, no, 25, 27. Wow, 27 years after that, I remember perfectly the connection when I did the casting. And I remember and Amelia Castillo, I know Amelia Ochandiano who, who doing the, the cast, she, she was the casting director and she say, Antonio, is here say that finally an actor understood the, the intense of the situation. And I remember clearly and I'm finishing, sorry, for uh, the first time in my life, for first of my life, na, 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 na. I, I remember the for first of my life, I, I, I really feel an actor. I, I really feel that I, uh, I, I do something and I was connected with the idea of the, of the script. Um, and yes, it was, it was my beginning. And, and from, from, from then on, um, I keep doing things. So, so Ithia, thank you very much. You know, you know, I I never I never refuse the occasion so to say you thank you, but once again, thank you so much and and hopefully it wasn't the last. So please. No, uh, no. Let's... I didn't know that story, Antonio. <laughs> I didn't know that story. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know that. Sorry, sorry, I I, 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 I it wasn't my, my intention, but I I, I am uh, so, you were fantastic, you know, that's that's all yeah, exactly. you did a long speech, you had a long speech and fantastic one. <laughs> my story, I'm, I'm not sure what happened. I, I'm the first surprise of what happened in my life. You know, because, no, I, I, I feel for my first time the, the I don't know, the, the, the passion for this uh, job, for this, mm, see, uh, job, no, for this, this job I went uh, in, the, in, in theater. In, 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 amateur, in, in amateur theater in my village, you know, like this, uh, I feel that after that uh, leave me to Paris to, to learn um, in a theater school. And when I was in Paris, I, I never in my life, never in my life dream uh, to work in cinema. You know, for me, cinema was something stratospheric, something very, very far of me. Uh, I, 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 I could understand theater, it's a place, it's a space, it's here, that happens. You can write, you can, you can play, but cinema, it depends on other people and I don't know. And I, I met a man who prepared his first movie in his life, a director, and he was in my school to searching for, a, he was writing French, uh, we search an, an actor with a Spanish accent for a first uh, long metrage uh, and first a uh, long, 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 long film. Long film? Long film? Yeah, I remember that film. I remember it as a scene. I don't know. I don't know because yeah, it was the first and the first uh, three people uh, saw the movie. I don't, I don't know if you saw the first two, the very first. You know the, is very, it, the very first? Is that Manuel Poirier's films? Well, yes, Emmanuel Poirier, and he prepared his first film. He was La Petita Mida Antonio, and he, uh, he, I don't know, he was, he, he were, he was searching for a guy exactly like me. Uh, it's a, a like, kind of a cinema verite, you know. It was he, he don't uh, look for an actor who play another character to to have to build a character. No, no, he he, he search uh, people, persons like this, and I was exactly oh. He thought I was exactly for for the for the wrong was perfect, but he uh, called me for his second film, for his third, for the fourth, for the fifth, 
And the fifth one goes to Cannes, to the festival. And I, I was no conscience that I was an actor of cinema because uh, I don't, even my friends, uh, this, all these movies was in France and I don't live in France. I live in near to Barcelona. So in, in Spain, nobody knows me. Even me, I was no conscience to, to be really, I, I thought, well, I have a friend, a director, he becomes my friend and he called me uh, each year for a film. But in Cannes, I have conscience that we were uh, in Cannes and okay, uh, Clint Eastwood, I don't know, you know, Sean Penn and it was what happened here. Uh, the normal, I mean, the, the, the story you. continues. I don't understand, <laughs> I don't understand why, but the story- You are a crack. <laughs> <laughs> You're a super crack, man. Well, let's go to more. Uh, it's, this is your first film, so it's a it's probably a fresher um, or more recent memory. But what was your inspiration to get started in the film industry, and what got you started? Hmm. Yes, it's my first film, so I cannot explain which is my, my experience uh, in a long term. But, um, well, I, I, I don't, I mean, I did, it took me very long to realize I wanted to direct a film. Um, and I actually studied literature and, 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 at the big, and also cinematography. And one day I had the opportunity to direct one short film and it was a horrible experience, but I don't know why. I felt something uh, there uh, that kept me going. And well, in my case, I have to say it's been a um, very long process, almost 15 years, preparing myself, shooting a lot of short films, trying to be in all the films I could, uh, working in all kinds of departments to learn. So, and, and also to make the film, it was also very long to get all the money, to get the, the, all the production. So yeah, I think it was a big journey, a long journey uh, that needed a lot of, um, to be very patient, but I, I think it was worth it. And I hope I have the chance to make, to shoot other films. Uh, Luis Miguel Segui, um, what about you? how did you, you know, what got you started? What was the inspiration for you to become an actor? Well, first of all, um, hello everyone. Um, well, hello. first of all, too, well, thank you, Antonio. How you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> right now, right now, I'm in the I'm in the um, uh, festival of Alicante. That um, that they're waiting for me for the for the celebration because I got to give an award this this night. But my story, well, I'm, I'm from Alicante, and it's um, it's a Mediterranean city. Um, and I, I, I went to Madrid when I was very young, around 20, uh, 1920. I started with the school with, with Antonio de la Torre. I don't know if you remember. With I remember your family. house, the party at the terrace. Yeah. 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 So, so I start. I start. Oh, all, the people, all the people yeah. start with de la Torre. Yeah. Uh, you remember you my home? Is it, is, my is, for <laughs> starting, it's important the failure. It's important to start from the bottom, from, from the. Yeah, so I start. I start doing theater. I had a company, uh, theater company, and I was doing theater a lot for a long, for a long time. Took uh, too many years, and after that, I started step by step doing doing a short films. I, I, I remember that I did, I did a short film with uh, Antonio La Torre that is called Hombres y Mujeres. When I was what? starting, do you remember when with my? Uh, oh, so man, because it's, it's my life. My life keep in that uh, emotional uh, way. So obviously. With a woman, <laughs> yeah, and then and then I, I did I did I, I'm sure that Ithiar Boyain it doesn't it, it doesn't remember but but I did it a little a little um, um, character in Flores de Otro Mundo I I I played the the the, the um, journalist one season or, or I don't remember very, very well but 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 I was in in that movie too so step by step <laughs> I was doing yeah. I was doing works and and um, and, and I started in, in a show in a TV show in in La Quesavecina. and and that's my story. I mean, it was very very little step by step, but but very very. 
I, you, you are laughing a lot, <laughs> Sergi. <laughs> no, no, because I, 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 I constate that uh, except Pilar and me, all the people start with uh, De La Torre. All the people uh, start with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, because what, 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 what happened we, here? We, we have, we have <laughs> some, some friends. So, so the, the real... So the real success is when you are out of me. So this is the moment. So, so the career you are connected with me. So when you can be out, so wow, this is the moment of, of freedom. This is the. I, I remember Antonio, our, yeah, our parties a long time ago, twenty or more years ago, doing our yeah. our videos on our, our, our parties with uh, Alberto and Willy and yeah, and in the school. Yeah, it was a good times. Yeah. So, so we're going to talk about each of your films, uh, but we're inviting the audience to watch it uh, this weekend and this week. So let's not give spoilers. Let's not go into too much of uh, the ending or major moment in the films uh, so that we invite the audience to experience it for themselves. Um, I think yeah. I'd like to, you, to start with you, Antonio. Um, so our audience had a chance to have an advanced screening of The Endless Trench. The film opened on Netflix on yeah. November 6th. Um, we will be, um, we're sharing the conversation we had uh, with the filmmaker tonight at 7.30. Um, can you talk about, um, you know, the, the, the characters and specifically how you acted fear? Because there's so many different level of fear in the film. Uh, what did you do as an actor to really um, work all those levels of fears? Um, oh, I, I try to be brief, which is difficult to me. The, 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 these fellows that know me, just, uh, but I try to do my best to say, I mean, I mean, oh, uh, for, so for me, when, when so doing the Emlyn Strange is, is, is talking about, is talking about, I think, I, I know it's a topic, but but I feel it from the bottom of my heart. It's true. It's, it's talking about the 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 story of Spain, the story uh, of my parents, the story of a generation who was uh, uh, silenced by fear, um, unsilenced by it, uh, by the regime that uh, that that. Yeah, that they won, and, and they and they and they won the power to to shut up, to shut off the 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 the, the sound of, of for talking a different way. For for me, the endless trench is 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 the story of especially my mother. Oh, uh, the the this, the Franco regime, the dictatorship was a regime especially aggressive for the poor woman. My mother was illiterate all her life because the uh, the decision of the regime was for for the poor woman was was they have to take care of the man they have to 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 spend their life to to serve the the man so i think it was uh, so so this is, is a opportunity of a chance of of tell the story of my mother or the of my parents tell the story of my 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 Andalusia, the south of Spain, the, the way they talk, the way because uh, because of the regime show them a way of talking about using the language in a figurative way, in a, no talking literal, talking trying to find a way to talk is very difficult. It's very difficult to say in, in Spanish, especially in English, obviously, to talk to 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 sort off to, to sort of the uh, the rules so and of course in definition uh, is 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 a chance which is obviously is is a sort for an actor to to develop a uh, a character for 30 years which give you a chance of obviously of of, of doing your best to to try to show how how will happen to you you uh, spend your entire life in 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 a prison, in a and in some way, what it was to, it was to happen to the generation of my parents. So they they were in an endless trench, 
uh, for 40 years. So, so yes, it's, it's the story of my country. So, so it's it's very important to talk about it because uh, because now uh, 40 40 years 45 years later on we we have uh, we still have to gain our freedom because freedom I think is is a fight freedom information is a fight that you have to to fight every day every day every day in a human life freedom and and information is a fight. And it's Sorry. Sorry for the speech. But, but it, it's very timely for all of us everywhere. Um, can you talk a tiny bit about um, the transformation that you, you, you talked about, you know, 30 year span? So for, for the audience where it's a film of- Yeah, you know, we, we, uh, at the, during the civil war, a man in hiding, and you've got 30 years of transformation of the body and the mind. And through that, all the stage of fears. Can you be? Can you talk we, 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 about the transformation that you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, we 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 shot we shot the, the, the movie in, in two periods. I think in my memory it's okay. I think maybe the first time were five weeks and the second four weeks in ter, in, ter, in overall nine weeks, which is a lot <laughs> for Spanish cinema. But the thing is, we stopped for five weeks, which gave me the chance of of weight gaining fifteen kilos. Uh, I don't know in pounds, sorry. Uh, but the thing is, um, for doing the transformation for the second part of the character, uh, yeah, which is obviously is 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 helpful for for you for the way you you move for the way that and then uh, and I remember especially the, the last uh, one week I know maybe one and a half week I don't have to remember right now. But the thing is. It was a uh, was a very intense work of, of makeup. I remember a session of, of five hours and a half of, of makeup for for uh, for me. So so yeah, but yes, it was it was it was a, a tough job for, for, for all the crew. And I think what to say? We we do our we did our best, and and hopefully the audience can. But for me. More of that, which is which is great, as I say, and and and, and I'm getting, I'm feeling very gifted, very honored for 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 having this. For me, the most uh, interesting things, if you let me to say that, of the endless strange, is the chance to understand how how the generation of the Spanish uh, people from the the half of um, of the the the, the the 20th century uh, live in the way of of of, of the fear and the silence of, of fears. Uh, unfortunately, uh, make us uh, drive us to live under our possibilities. Thank you. It's a powerful uh, performance, and uh, I have to say that um, maybe with Luis Tosar. You are the, act, the Spanish actor that we see the most on the big screen at the Egyptian theater. We've shown over the past um, many years, um, many of the films that you've acted in. You were with us for the recent Spanish cinema in LA, I think in 2010 for Gordos, and you were in Miami for Grupo 7 in 2012. So um, encourage the audience to really watch um, uh, The Endless Trench uh, with the screeners and when it's available on Netflix. I'd like to go to you, Pilar. Um, you, um, your film is a coming of age stories uh, set in the 90s. It's also a portrait of the society of that time. It's 15 years later after Franco has passed and Spanish democracy is young. Uh, can you talk about the usage of music in your film? It has such an important role uh, and how, you know, what, how did you work with the music and in capturing the era? Mm. Well, the, the music was a very important part of the film in, in, in two ways. One part is the, the song that the girls in the school are, are, are having to, to sing for, the, for one of the class of the uh, coro, uh, Raul. It's choir, the, the choir. The choir, the choir. But it is the, uh, the opening scene and it's the typical religious uh, song, very beautiful, composed by Carlos Naya, I have to say. 
And then by the other hand, um, uh, the music that we are using in the film, it's a, it's the, it's a music that is always, it's, it, it always comes from a uh, radio cassette or television or from the disco. And uh, it's the music that playing at that moment in Zaragoza, that is my hometown. And uh, it's the music that, because I have the same age as Celia, uh, in the film, Celia is 12 years old, and I was 12 also in, in the year 92. And in Zaragoza, specifically, we lived like a very important music boom um, with Eros del Silencio, that I think they, are, they are also, well, I, I know they are also very well known uh, there in the US, but also with Niños del Brasil, Las Novias, uh, and many other groups. And I remember, and I remember it was a very big part of our lives and a way of growing up and to, to start contacting um, your friends. You know? And I think it was a type of music that was totally the opposite of how we were in the school, you know? because it was also at this moment of, um, of street gangs, of punkies, rockabillies, heavies, and we were these schoolgirls with the uniform listening to heavy singers on our radio cassettes. So I thought it was, um, I wanted to portray this, this um, contradiction. Well, it's not really a contradiction. It's more like a, a, that is not the music you, were, you could imagine we would, we would, we would listen to. Um, we have a question from the audience um, about um, Celia and the actress Andrea uh, Fandoms. <clears throat> the comment is that she's spectacular. You know, how did you find her? How did you work with her? And I have to say the whole ensemble of girls is really, um, everything is, is right. There's no out of tune, um, you know, acting in it. So can you talk about um, Celia and the rest of the girls working with the girls? Yeah, well, the truth is that I'm I'm very much in love with them. I have to say, and I'm very proud of the of the work they did, and um, they made me the shoot uh, the shooting very easy. I'm very happy, and uh, uh, well, we made a very uh, a very tough um, casting uh, during almost seven months because my producers and myself we we were sure that. Uh, we had to make the right election, the right choice, that it was not about directing that also, but it was more about choosing the right people. And also we were, during the casting, we were looking for girls that the way they, 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 they already were, their personality was already matching the, the, the character. And also we had the screen open to change it um, with their own personality. But in the case of Celia, Andrea Fandos is the name of the actress. She's also from Zaragoza. All the girls are from Zaragoza. And she made a short film, uh, La Comulgante, de Ignacio La Sierra. And I saw her and I was uh, really impressed. But the thing is that when we started the casting, she was, she was too young. So we saw her again three months later. And she was so much like, like the Celia I had in my mind. And she reminded me so much also the, the tenderness and the, the innocence that I myself, that I had when I was her age, that we decided to make uh, Celia younger in the script. Celia was supposed to be a little bit older, like 13, 14. So we were so much in love with Andrea that we changed the age of Celia and we thought she was, she was Celia. And, and of course I still, I mean, the way she was, Talking, she was moving, she was looking. We were, she, she hypnotized us during the casting. She's, she's hypnotizing. Uh, thank you. I'd like um, Isiar um, to talk about Rosa's wedding. Um, the film won a uh, jury prize at Malaga Film Festival. It's a crowd pleaser. Um, it's so Rosa is a stream, seamstress in the film industry and she's helping everyone from the family, the friends, the neighbors. Um, can you talk about uh, the inspiration for you, um, you know, in writing, Rosa? <clears throat> and uh, did you, you've worked uh, with Candela Peña um, in your previous film as well. Did you have Candela Peña in your mind when you were writing, Rosa? Well, the inspiration came from, uh, from some 
piece in a in newspaper that was talking about these solo weddings. And I found it very funny to marry yourself. I found it, it was a great idea <laughs> and, uh, and quite, quite shocking. So, um, so I, I, I start digging a little bit more about what was about it. And then I discovered that behind it, it, it was something which is, I think, very important, which is the self-esteem and the self-love and taking care of yourself. Um, so I told Alicia Luna, which with I have worked in uh, Te doy mis ojos previously, and, and we both thought it was a great way through a wedding, I mean, to, to try and, and wrap up a story about around a person who wants to marry herself, in this case, a woman, and then trying to create what the circumstances and who's here and why she wanted to marry herself and all that. So we dig around and we found many women who, who have done it all over the world. Uh, and then in Spain, there is this marvelous woman who does, who does collective marriages, you marry yourself, but in a group. And she also do a, a premarital course and workshop, so to be prepared for your own wedding. And, the, and, and, the, and then we met a few women who had done it and we talked to them. And then we just decided it was going to be Rosa, it's gonna, it was going to be mid 40s. Uh, it was going to be this kind of person, which is like the carer with a capital letter, it's always there for everybody. And then obviously she had a family around, and this is when Sergio Lopez and Natalie Poza and, and Paula Osero and the rest come about because usually these type of people always have a family who, who are very happy to have everything on top of, of someone like Rosa. And then we created the, the circumstances. And then we wanted to, <clears throat> the thing is, Rosa is not in a, in a good situation in life. She needs to take a decision. She needs to, to, to take a turnaround. But the rest of the family are exactly the same or even worse. And that's where, where the comedy came from too, because they are all, they are all in crisis. And also they, they think process wedding is gonna be a conventional wedding, which is not. And then that also creates the, the, the comedy about it. So about Candela, I was looking forward to work with Candela again, same as with Antonio de la Torre, with I'm dying to, to work again. <laughs> I, I, I've been counting Antonio, we did four films, four. <laughs> my first four films, this Antonio was, a, was like my lucky, my lucky. My lucky actor. We've so, shown um, them all. We've shown them all. We are moving. We are moving an energy. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I wanted to work with Candela again, but I, I prefer always not to write thinking in anybody because yeah. then you might have the experience of, of that actor cannot or that actor is not able or doesn't want to do it because that's very much a possibility. So I prefer to try and write a great character so a great actor and a great actress will, will, will want to do it. So I do my best in the script try not to think in anybody, and then I, I do casting. This was a particular casting also, it had to be, it had to be a family. So we, we needed, I needed to see how the combinations were gonna work, how the, the, the brother, the sister, and the father, and, and everyone, um, but it's been, <clears throat> it's been great, and it's been, and it's been a, a fantastic family to work with. Uh, beginning with Sergi, which <laughs> I still laugh every time I see him, on screen and out screen, Sergi, I always laugh anytime I see you. But um, I think they do an amazing performance, all of them, all of them, because it's, uh, and they work together fantastically. And it was a pleasure to see them just, just making, making the scenes uh, live and, 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 and trying to find the fun in every, in every world and every situation. So, so it, was, it was very good. I think I've been very lucky with this mega casting. Thank you, Itziar. Let's go to Sergi. Uh, you are actually presenting <clears throat> two films, La Innocencia, and Rosa's yes. Innocence and Rosa's Wedding. You have the role of the brother, divorced brothers of Rosa, and you've yes. got the role um, of the father, uh, a bit tense father in La Innocencia. Um, so can you talk about how you approach both roles and, um, and working with Isiar as you're there here? Well, it was a, uh, well, uh, uh, first, you know, uh, our job is really something, our, well, our job actor, but make movies is uh, a miracle, is a miracle. So to be in, in uh, two different movies here, it's, it's uh, two miracles in the same time, in the same time. But uh, it's, it, it's a different kind of movie because, you know, uh, La Boda Rosa is a comedy, though, so that means, well, it's a comedy. La Inocencia is something about something around comedy a little bit, but it's different. It's different. La, la, la Boda de Rosa is a comedy, so we need to we need uh, we needed to to make a family to 
to find a dynamic uh, uh, between all the characters and follow the, the screenplay. You know, the screenplay was very good writing. Uh, Ithier is, uh, is somebody who is easy to work with her and, uh, and he has, uh, well, don't, don't look at this, don't hear that, uh, Ithier. No, but it's somebody who has, you know, a, a really look, a cinematographic look. So it was, it was very easy. I, uh, maybe it's not good to say that it was easy, but it was easy to try to find the pleasure to, to go to the comedy and to play and to play and then follow the history because it's a history uh, very crazy. And in the same time, it's a, it's a history about uh, something really necessary to uh, uh, let a woman take the power that it's something that now uh, need um, uh, urgent, really urgent. And there is a lot of, uh, you know, is a, I, a lot of people uh, of my family and friends and people who goes to, to see the movie, tell me that, that it was a comedy, so they love, but they cry too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my mother, my, uh, my, my cuñado, brother-in-law. <laughs> Rolling law, you know, a lot of, of yeah. men and, and, and the, girls, you know, the, the character of the, <laughs> that, yes, exactly. It's a book of the, the, the character of the, of, Can, of Candela is a woman <laughs> that we know very good in Spain, that we know very good is the, the and say to all these women that uh, you can stop and uh, say what you want to, to do with your life. You can stop the time, you can stop the depression and, and try to be happy, not uh, because to, uh, to work to the others, the, the others' happiness, you know? So it was uh, wonderful. Uh, La Inocencia, it's nothing, it's a, La Inocencia, it's a little movie. It's, it's a, a director, it's a woman too. Uh, it's a, another time, a pleasure to work with her. Uh, it's, her it's her first movie. And uh, we shoot in his little town, and uh, uh, it was another kind of movie. All the all the town was uh, playing in the movie. They play the the, the town, the, the, so they they uh, uh, built for us all the the la fiestas del the fiestas del pueblo, como se diría. The you know the the folkloric part party is uh, popular <laughs> in the street in this yeah in the in, this, in the, the town and, festivals and all the, all, so the, so we, the actors we are not in a dynamical of of, of actors we, we we wanted to try to to be in the middle of the people who are not actors and try to. Um, uh, Camouflate, be camouflate, uh, and and the, the, you don't see them. We are actors. We are one more of this town. So we live with the people. We know the people. When I arrived to the shooting, Lucia told me I played the character of is the the father of the of the main uh, um, uh, character, uh, no main character, and uh, is a little bit her history. Not exactly, but is the history of the director. So she said to me, look, this is this is my father. And he presented me his her uh, real father, who and you know in the I read the script and his father, his father her father is not absolutely very um, a, a big capacity of comprehension of the things that uh, close mind. He, he, he's not a feel, <laughs> you know, like uh, like you, uh, well, like so, you. you know, it was, <laughs> yes. So it was an, another kind of. Uh, of history, another kind of uh, of uh, swimming, no? So, so let me ask you, um, so for me, on some of your first films, I'm, I'm French and I, Manuel Poirier, you know, his first mm. film and especially Western was uh, a big moment for me. And I remember you and uh, has always pleasure watching you act in films. You uh, work with Guillermo del Toro, Stefan Frears, Dominic Moll, um, Spanish, French filmmakers, um, how do you choose which roles uh, to play next on your side? Well, um, in general, in general, but it's about, I try to be simple because uh, we do what we can, <laughs> what we can, you know, Definitely. it depends on the, the proposition, it depends on you, it depends on your life, but I try to, uh, uh, it's uh, rare for me to choose to, to choose to choose a project because my character only, you know, 
um, well, I love uh, characters, good characters, and it's important. But uh, for me, it's more important that when, when I read the screenplay, and I, something happens that I that I like, that I, I um, made me cry or laugh, or uh, that uh, uh, film uh, that bring me some emotion. I don't know. And after, if my character is more present or more, more little or more more simple or some, you know, sometimes I. I'm very proud of some movies that sometimes, or you know, I'm I'm agree to make a, a character not very uh, uh, explosing. I don't know, not very uh, perfil bajo. No sé cómo se dice, cómo se llama perfil bajo en, en low profile. Low profile. Low profile. Low low profile, profile but low in, low profile. A, in a level, high profile movie, you know. Yes, I'll, I'll, I, I prefer. Well, I prefer. No, I prefer a high level of the character and a high level of the, of the movie. But uh, for me, it's more important the movie. So I, I don't know. I try to like all the people. I try. Uh, even uh, we have the enormous chance that we can choose, and that it's uh, enormous, enormous. Thank you, Sergi. Uh, so I would like to uh, maybe close that conversation by first acknowledging that. Um, we have in the film series um, some great film directed by women, you know, Isia Bolen, Pilar uh, Palomera, we have um, Garcia uh, Querejeta. Uh, with Gracia. Our, thank you. <laughs> with the film. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and, but each of the films that are presenting have, um, you know, very strong female characters. You know, Belen Costa in The Endless Trench. I would like to talk about a bit uh, the Spanish film industry and how um, is the role of, uh, you know, women filmmakers now easier in Spain? Is it more inclusive society? Uh, you as an actor, when you read your scripts, um, are you pushing uh, the boundaries as well so that the roles of the woman around you are not just one layered, but multi-layered characters. Can you talk about each of you, um, how uh, the Spanish industry is doing in that regards? Maybe we can start with you, ECR. Well, I think, I think for- for many, for many decades, there was only three female directors in Spain, literally three. And then in the 90s, there was a, a, a bigger number that we were like 30 odds. But then we discovered that we weren't growing, that it, it was 30 and 30, and that the, the, the numbers were stuck there. So, so there is a group of filmmakers. We created the CIMA, which is an association of women, to try and, first of all, to see what was going on. Why, why? First of all, to see the real numbers. So we, we got a, a study done like 15 years ago, yeah. and then we discovered that there was only like 7% of women directors, about 15% of uh, producers and 10% of writers. So the numbers were really, I mean, that was not a diverse cinematography at all. The numbers were very, very, very small. And if you go to some areas in the crew, uh, they were always historically male, like, like music, like um, the art department was very much male. It was the camera sound. So, um, so we started trying to get organized and, and trying to, to make an impact and in, in the, in the, basically in the conscience of the need of having um, female directors and female writers and producers because otherwise there are stories which are not gonna be told because obviously they are in, in, in other interests. And also because as the study we, we tried to, we got, we got a study from two specialists, what they saw there was that female characters generally were much weaker than male characters and they were much less represent and there was a much less variety of female characters in films that they were male characters. So we are talking about how we portray the world. So it was very important that there was a bigger presence of, of, of women telling stories and, and portraying different roles. And I think in the last years we're seeing directors like Pilar Palomero arriving, which is fantastic, like Lucia, the director of La Inocencia, and there is many others in the last films uh, which, which are doing films, which I'm sure 
a man wouldn't have done, for example, Pilar's film, I'm sure a man could tell that because it's her experiences, her memories, is her, her way of seeing life when she was a teenager. So all that is very rich. The same goes for Lucia. And uh, so, so I'm very positive because, because I'm seeing these, these new filmmakers coming and telling stories and, and, and writing other parts and other, and other, with other sensibility, which is great. I think I'm, I'm, I'm very, 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 I mean, I think you can never relax because because when times of crisis, the weakest always get uh, get get aside first. But uh, but I think we have a lot to celebrate, and like like uh, like I say, like films like Las Niñas. I mean, it's it's great. We are bringing in different stories, so it's a big change to me when in the 90s, was when, when I was doing All Hasta Sola and Todo Mis Ojos and these films, to now, and also there is an awareness that there is a need of having other voices, which is which yeah. is. To. And, and we are seeing there has been there has been this very unpopular politics to, to give quotas to to um, to female filmmakers. But and I wasn't very happy with the quotas at the beginning, but it is it is working. And also, which is which is very important to we are seeing also women behind the camera doing things. Doing in, in for example in Flor in La Boda de Rosa there is a song woman, there is a um, a woman in the camera too. It's, it's two two people is a man, but it's also a woman. There is the art department is run by a woman. The three producers, the four producers were women. The writers were women. And we are still in a story which probably mm, it, it would have been told very different by a man. So, so, um, so I think it's very good to have all this, this talent in the end, this talent coming in, participating in the film industry. Pilar, do you want to comment? <laughs> Sorry for the speech. <laughs> bien, no. muy bien. No, no, muy bien. Muy bien. I agree totally with Isiar, and um, I have to say, uh, when I was studying cinematography, it was uh, yeah, 15 years ago, and I started working in camera department, um, mostly as a camera assistant, and, um, and I could see that in my film school, it was mostly woman, women, and while I was working, um, I barely saw any um, woman in 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 the cinematography department, camera department, or in general. No, I I, I felt uh, uh, well, uh, cinema making, uh, filmmaking was a very masculinized uh, world, and uh, that's something that I saw with my own with my own eyes. I I I, I experienced it, and I and I wonder uh, during a very long time why this was happening. And, and it's true what uh, um, Ifiar was saying, that while I was studying, we had very little references of uh, women directors in Spain. And I think Ifiar, um, um, Isabel, Coixet, Gracia, Crejeta, were our references. Um, and they were fighters, but they were very few. And I think the work Cima was doing uh, was very important, also the politics. Uh, uh, supporting women, a uh, woman. I know also they they've been very. Uh, I mean, people didn't like them, and they were refusing. Even women were refusing them. Um, but I think now we are seeing the first uh, the first um, um, fruitos. No, like uh, it, was yeah. it was something that uh, last year we were having a meeting with um, with Tima in uh, Valladolid Film Festival. And Josefina Molina, we had the honor that she was there, and she said something that for me was very shocking, and I think it's the cue of, about this issue. And it was also about why um, that one of the reasons that um, more women were not making films uh, some, uh, in her times, back in her times, was because of a lack of uh, self-esteem. And uh, I realized it was like this because it was, for myself, was also difficult to to, to believe I can be a filmmaker. And I think it's because of a lack of references. And I am super happy that now there are more and more women directing also in the camera department, in the films departments. And I, we, I think we are getting equal numbers, but we are still have to, to, to fight because uh, we are, I mean, uh, why the numbers were so? Why why this big difference? Make no makes no change when you go to film film schools and and you have the same number of men and women. 
So yeah. I'd like to ask you the question, you know, as actor and as, you know, actors that have power, Antonio de la Torre, Sergi Lopez, Luis Miguel Segui, what is your responsibility? How do you push the boundaries to make sure that your colleague actress have yeah. the same uh, income as you are, you know, when you're on a film, but also that the stories uh, that are told are not just one view and, and male centric. What, how, what's your responsibility in it and how can you push the boundaries? Oh, it's difficult to say. No, no, I mean, it's difficult to say. I, I, I wanted to say something. I was listening very carefully to Pilar and it's here, but uh, yeah, for, for, for me, I, I want to say something, but, but I, I'm saying 10, 15 years ago, I, because uh, just in Spain, uh, I don't know, in the USA, but can imagine something like that, even worse, uh, just the 80% of the actors can make uh, a living of, of being an actor in, in Spain. So uh, and in my case, I was, I was, uh, Working as a journalist, I want to do my best as uh, as all my my, my colleagues. Until the forties, until the forties, when I, I I did a movie uh, that blew almost black, and I went uh, the boy well, But the thing is, it's, it's a movie that ch that changed my career, and, and I could quit my work as a journalist and and begin to make a living of an actor from from that point to till now. I I know. And, and I was saying, because it's, it's in my interviews, I'm not saying that because I have my college here, Pilar, and it's here, because I really mean it. I was really uh, aware that I, I could be success, uh, meaning making an actor for a living, in my 40s, because it was in my 40s when that happened, uh, because I'm a man. Uh, and I was saying, uh, I remember properly um, a movie, uh, the Last Circus is the international threat to the Ballada Triste Trompet. I remember I played a role. I was 42 years old and I did that role. And I remember my, my, um, the role that make my, 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 uh, my girlfriend was 25 years older. I know nobody, nobody asked what, what happened with that couple. If, if in the opposite side, you have to put in the script. So I think I think there's something in in, in, in in society, there's something in so there's something more more complex, more more general. I, and, and I'm not trying to avoid my, my responsibility when you when you uh, address the, the question to ask like, what what can, what could we do or what can we do? But that's that's the truth. The truth is is, is uh, nowadays. We have a, a main point of view of telling the story of, 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 of telling the, the, the life we, we leave the world. Um, and, and, and I think we're changing that. We're, uh, we're making a swift with that, hopefully, with the pioneers, my beloved theater and, and the talented uh, Pilar and all the, and, and hopefully we are we're really close to, to to make an equal and more liberty war, starting from uh, put Donald Trump for an index new election. Sorry for, for, for address this, this, but it's very important. The 3rd of November, we have to, to vote Joe Biden in that way. Sergi, you will be closing yes. the chapter. Go for it. No, no, uh, no, I don't know. I wanted, uh, just wanted to say that I think my, our responsibility of the is not the actors uh, about the, the actress, but the man's about all the women. I think it's something yeah. that happened in the society and what, it, what the pillar told, it, it's, in, it's a fight, uh, it, it's the beginning of the fight. You know, I think the, the power of the woman, it's, a, it's something that uh, have to eclair, uh, eclair, eclair, light, put light in the in, uh, next century. Uh, I think that, that, that have to be like this, but we are in the beginning of the thing. Like you are said, in the schools of cinema, there is a, well, some things that some of them that, that I know is more girls, more more girls than, than boys, and uh, and uh, it, it changed a little bit when I started in cinema a long time ago when I was younger. 
And all the time it was uh, all the teams was was only the man, and now you can feel a lot of uh, directors and screen uh, screen uh, woman and uh, and the woman you can feel that, but it's not enough. It's never enough because because we have uh, <laughs> um, historical doubt doubt. How does it called? Doubt. We, we... Doubt. A historical yes. doubt. Doubt. <laughs> historical doubt. We have a historical de, doubt. De, 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 de solamente. Sino, no, it's a, it's a, it's a historical yes, doubt a with, with, a, I want to with, talk about it. Yes. <laughs> no, with a woman, and I think that, that. that we, we, uh, it's, uh, we have to try like, uh, not like uh, actors, but like uh, ciudadanos, like uh, citizens, like uh, citizens. 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 Like citizens. Citizens. We have, citizens. We have to, to leave space to mm. that they uh, take decisions, you know, they, uh, the girls, the women. Yes. I would yes. like to, yes, we need to. And I'd like to invite uh, all the audience to uh, watch the film uh, that um, are available virtually. You can check on the American Cinematic website, uh, LA Recent Spanish Cinema uh, website, uh, how to access uh, the films. I'd like to uh, thank you all, Sergi, Luis Miguel, Isiar, Antonio, Pilar, uh, for joining us uh, this uh, morning and uh, for sharing with us um, your stories. Uh, we're excited to be showing your films and uh, we hope to welcome you all back at the theater when it is safe to do so. Uh, in the meantime, uh, stay safe, stay creative, and um, thank you for being with us. And thank you, the audience, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Hasta luego. Hasta luego a todos.